they'll typically run negative camber on both sides. So if you were to look at the front of the car and paid attention to the tires, you would see that the tops of those tires are closer together. Most don't get to do it in a closed, safe environment, but now... Y cuando hablamos sobre los partes más importantes del carro, tenemos que empezar con las llantas. And today there are more and more motorcycles out on the open road for a number of reasons. It's the summertime, but also high gas prices. But you know, most of us try to have our tires last uh, maybe a few years, perhaps even longer than that. But in this sport, some drivers can go through a full set of tires in just one afternoon. Some of the top IRL teams have come back to Kansas for testing ahead of the Roadrunner 300 race, which is just a couple of weeks away. But things got off to a slow start for Danica Patrick as they were only able to get in about 30 laps this morning because of the weather. The temperature has to be above 50 degrees for them to run the Firestone tires, but they are optimistic that they'll be able to put down some more laps later on this afternoon as the temperature has come up quite a bit. The testing session is all about communication. In fact, I spoke to our rookie driver this season, Mike Conway, uh, about the relationship that exists between the driver and mechanics and when they're trying to find that, that perfect setup. Michael Conway there, new to IndyCar racing. He most recently raced in the GP2 series overseas and says he is excited about the opportunity to race in one of the top levels of open wheel racing here in the States. Again, the Roadrunner 300 race coming up just a couple of weeks away. So look for more coverage and more action here from the Kansas Speedway. I'm Marcus Moore reporting. Even on our everyday cars, you'll find negative camber, and that's basically talking about the angle of the tire. And when these IRL guys say go to a road course, for example, they'll typically run negative camber on both sides. So if you were to look at the front of the car and paid attention to the tires, you would see that the tops of those tires are closer together. But then when they come to an oval course like the Kansas Speedway, they'll typically run positive camber on one side and negative on the other. Jerry, it is Friday night, an exciting night of racing is still well underway here in Kansas City, Kansas. You know, racing is a very expensive sport, especially when you consider that racing fuel costs six or seven dollars a gallon. And these fuel prices on our everyday uh, out on the roads there is affecting everything, including racing. The man who owns this track says that people aren't buying as much food as they usually do. And fans will tell you that fewer cars are racing because of the high cost of transportation. With the weekend here in a clear blue sky, pit row rumbles and faithful fans wait for what's around the corner. Go fast, turn left. Action that is circle track racing at Lakeside Speedway. It's the next best thing to NASCAR, and we've only got NASCAR in here once a year. It is raw, it is fast, and today more expensive than ever. My name is Nate Newton. I run the 33 Modified out here at Lakeside Speedway. started racing in 2003, but he says the economy and more specifically gas prices have changed life for him and many of his fellow racers. It has hindered the amount of racing we're able to do, it made it a lot tougher on all of us. Gas prices definitely affect where you go to race. Instead of traveling hundreds of miles to compete, Shelby Manthe, the only female in the field this weekend, is focusing on local races like this one, hoping to meet her goals. We're sitting 11th in points right now. My goal this year is top 10 in points. Uh, we're pretty close. It is the kind of competition that seems to draw scores of fans, despite tough economic times. Fans will never leave, as a guarantee. You know, the fans won't ever go anywhere. As long as the action on the track continues. And that, uh, that action continues tonight. There's still another race left to go here at, at Lakeside uh, Speedway tonight. And there's actually something very interesting to, to, to point out. While there may be fewer racers actually traveling to go to uh, different tracks and race, and they're actually running fewer races, the owners of a number of these tracks say the fan count has remained the same and that uh, fans have still been loyal to the sport and they perhaps will be no matter how high the price of gas gets. We are live in KCK tonight. Marcus Moore, KNBC 9 News. Hey, Jim, it is an awesome job and literally thousands of people showed up at the Sprint Center downtown to watch these these monster trucks that make the biggest SUVs and trucks on the road look like little bitty, little bitty cars. And uh, so we met one woman whose office is mobile and can jump and it put on quite a show tonight here at the Sprint Center. Once you put your helmet on, it's like you forget everything and your foot goes to the floor and it's, it's a lot of adrenaline goes through you. What a way to earn a living. And they have about 14 to 1500 horsepower. Behind the wheel of a monster where there's no taming the power. You don't. 
you let it you let it rip. It's what a Tonga Noxie woman has done for the better part of 10 years. My name is Don Creighton and I race the Scarlet Bandit Monster. The married mother of three travels the country competing in the monster truck jam and it's no easy job. 66 inch tires are like four inches taller than me. And it should probably come as no surprise that running one of these trucks can get pretty expensive. For example, one tire can cost nearly $3,000, and then they have $12,000 worth of shots. Up these bars. Very simple. You want me to do it? But the real value may come in paving the way for other women to enter a male-dominated sport. It's nice being a role model to some of these kids. You get a lot of even you know teenagers and everything coming up to me, girls, and just really interested in that a woman can do something like this. And Creighton does it well, having won several competitions and along the way making quite a name for herself as a pilot. The Scarlet Bandit. And if you didn't catch Miss Creighton uh, tonight doing her thing, you can catch her this weekend. There's a couple of shows on Saturday and then another show on uh, Sunday. And Jim and Kelly, it really is impressive to see her driving that, that truck. I mean, she's literally, I don't know how tall she is. She was talking about it, about 60 inches tall. And uh, she climbs into that truck and uh, she really does a great job. So it's an awesome show. Back to you. Chris, you know, for some people, it doesn't get any better than this. Packing up the RV, camping out for days at the racetrack, hoping to get up close and personal with some of NASCAR's biggest names. Long after qualifying for this weekend's big race, the drivers likely pass by this gate. Okay, where's my camera? Where's my camera? And cross paths with Kim Sands. Oh, my battery's gonna go dead. And some of NASCAR's biggest fans. All of them are on the prowl. Whichever guy gives me a picture with them this weekend. That's gonna okay, be so, so when somebody stops, we have to take his camera and take a picture. Sometimes all they get is just a glimpse. Hi! All the while hoping they get much more than that. We need Michael Waltrip to come and sign this coat. There are sharp eyes watching everything that passes by, but more often than not... He's driving too slow. He's got to be a nobody. He's driving fast. That's somebody. Woo! Go JJ! It's nobody. It's another nobody. It's all that part was, of the ups and downs of race weekend for these fans who sometimes yeah. get exactly what they're looking for. Reed, please, just one, just one, just one. Go get it, Reed, go Sandy. Say, Gary. And remember this you guy awesome, Reed, who you just met, his new Reed, favorite driver. Oh yeah, Perfect. that's good. <laughs> And uh, in case you're wondering, the driver they're all excited about was uh, Reed Sorensen. He drives the number 41 Target car. Not in the chase for the championship, but still had a strong way race last week and has a lot of fans out here. All of the fans out here tonight are ready for an exciting weekend of racing here in Kansas City. We're live at the Kansas Speedway. Marcus Moore, KNBC 9 News. Jerry and Natalie, look at the inside there. Isn't that wow. something? Marcus, I can see you behind the wheel, man. I can see you driving that thing. <laughs> well, you know, I am a Ferrari man myself. Okay. But oh, I can okay. see myself behind the wheel of this car as well. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, uh, quite a design. And as you know, it is inspired by the 69 Camaro. So really? it kind of definitely has those uh, those styling cues to it. You know, a lot of car manufacturers are going back to that retro look. Mm -hmm. Right. You had the Ford Mustang and then the Ford GT, which is like a, just a basic replica of the old GT40 that won right. uh, Le Mans so many years back. So this is definitely the wave of the future. Nice. Well, Marcus, we know that you're a car lover. We can tell by all the knowledge you have about cars. Have you actually <laughs> taken the time to sit in some there and get behind the wheel? You know, actually, I did. I sat in the uh, Corvette Z06, oh. which uh, oh. is a little bit further down. Now, that is quite a car. It's supposed to compete with the uh, with the Ford GT, your Porsche right. 911, and also mm. uh, the Ferraris out there. So uh, hopefully we'll get, get a chance to show you that later on this morning. So. It is that time of year again when red-hot convertibles and big trucks take center stage, but it's the concept cars that truly turn heads. This is Chevy's Camaro concept. They stopped making the Camaro back in 2002. And if they decide to bring it back, it may look like this. You know, it looks look muscle, you know, but it looks real slick. You know, it looks like you can fly. In one word. Awesome. Dynamite. Beautiful car. Now, if they gave me the car, uh, I'd wait for the show to get done and then I'd drive that bad boy home. <laughs> First, I go get insurance. He'll need it with a six liter V8 under the hood producing 400 horsepower. Not far away is the Shelby GR1. Actually, Marcus, it's not chrome. What is that? That is all aluminum. Reflecting Ford's desire to push the envelope in more ways than one. And it is capable of 605 horsepower. Wow. Yeah, pretty tremendous. And then there's Hummer's H3T. It surprised me at first. I was like, wow, I was like, that's a Hummer. It's interesting and unique and it, there will be some interest in it. Yeah, it's really nice. 
I wouldn't mind having it. It's proof that when it comes to cars, there's something out there for everybody, even if it's years down the road. Marcus Moore, KNBC, 9 News.